Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. G'day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Now today is the 29th of June 2021, just right before 1st of July where the all the quotas and all the new immigration policy will be implemented. But uh, on the 28th of Monday, uh, June 28th, uh, we've actually got a news came out from the Treasurer of the Australia, uh, whereby it says it's a report that's generated every five years in way to predict the future of population and the growth of the nation. It's a very interesting way to actually pinpoint uh, the require of migrants or for Australia in the future. So it's actually, as you can see, it's from the Australian government, the Treasury, uh, which is very, very important. That's the budget uh, required for the nation. And it was issued, as you see, on the 20th of June. So it's actually very, very updated news. Uh, I, I read it um, last night uh, and I wasn't able to actually do a um, a streaming or a video because uh, I'm still digesting all the information. So as you can see, it's 2020, uh, 2021 intergeneration report. Now uh, it's bulky. You might want to uh, do a Google search and click on the downloads, but uh, it's it's actually <laughs> too much to actually, to actually go through. But there is actually a news article which I'll go through, which. Uh, basically summarize the whole report what it says so uh, as you can see it's uh, Australian over the next 40 years so it's a prediction on the next 40 years uh, in release every five years to see how the budget will actually see uh, and uh, estimate and predict what the future will be so let's jump into the actual news article I think that's more explanatory uh, so again uh, as you can see that's a uh, treasurer uh, Josh Frydenberg uh, and the ne this news is all about intergeneration report predicts smaller population growth and rapid aging citizens so that's problematic and it's problematic for all nations and as we know we heading into uh, a modern world where the aging population obviously is a fact and it's it's getting more and more age people obviously people the life expectancy for human nowadays is longer so aging citizens is obviously a fact and it's growing everywhere and that's why migration becomes a part of the bigger picture for a nation's growth so uh smaller population growth what does that mean that means for birth okay the birth rate is dropping uh, obviously, uh, we heading into these two years for the impact of the virus. Uh, the the birth rate drops to a lowest point. So let's let's have a look what it actually says. Um, so. I'll, I'll read it and explain the things. A look at 40 years of Australian's future shows the thanks part of the um, pandemic population is not going to grow as quickly previously thought. And that's problematic, meaning the smaller economy uh, will be uh, tasked with managing the burden of rapid aging population. So that's a problem because uh, age citizens don't tend to work uh, and they don't you know the tax payable is obviously less than somebody who's at their 20s 30s or 40s uh, the latest intergeneration report IGR gives a glimpse of how Treasury uh, thinks the country and the economy will look uh, four decades time so 40 years ahead okay so IG IGR is handed down every five years as I have explained previously so the Treasurer George Frydenberg delivered it's in the morning Okay, and the publishment of the actual document, I think, was in uh, midday or afternoon. Anyhow, that's where I got the information. So, describing the show how early warning signs that Australia as a nation required to uh, foresee. Uh, the report paints a picture of country dealing with smaller than expected population growth, and that's problematic, obviously. 
and the complexity is Australian are expected to live longer. Now, that means the medical in the um, health systems and public health systems is better. That means the, the citizens are living longer. But the problem is if you're living longer, uh, there's not enough population to generate growth for the country. So men born in 2061 are expected to live to 86.8 years old on average compared to 81.4. Well, that's very good, 81. Um, and whereas woman is uh, the life expectancy is a bit longer, about three years longer than men. Uh, and obviously, the it seems to be good. That's a good news. That's a good news. People are living longer. But the bad news is that the, the growth of the nation is not there. So the economy will have issue there. So in 2015, the uh, report projected the Australian population will hit 40 million by uh, 2054. So that's about 30 years away. And that's uh, almost double of the population. Uh, and today predicts that reach 38.8 uh, by 2060. So that means it's slowing down. It's slowing down, obviously, due to uh, what we are experiencing these two years. So it's not as it's not as good as what it used to predict. It. Uh, it, it's dropping. It's dropping. Now the dropping. Um, for some people, they will think, "Well, that's that's okay. We we'll know we get medium growth." But uh, for economists, uh, obviously, that's the role for the treasurer. Uh, that's not really a good sign. That means that a lot of adjustments and budgets and spendings are required to be done. So um, as the fatality rate, that means the birth rate, uh, is is getting lower and lower. Uh, obviously, that causes a lot of issues there. So. Health education spending, that's got to be obviously got to be more. And the government's going to think of, well, where's that money going to come from if we have smaller, you know, um, population of working men or women? Uh, so that's that's where uh, the problem what lies. Uh, climate change, ongoing challenge, and that's all there. And obviously, there's all, 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 all sorts of talks on the migration part as it relies on 75% of the migration required to actually be coming from migrants. And that's that's where, let me just quickly search that the other news article, uh, which talks about the other side, uh, the other side of the intergeneration report. So as you can see here, the this is coming from Sydney Morning Herald, it's actually talking about the same topic intergeneration report uh, came out from as you can see 28th of June and it was 6:41 p.m. Uh, last evening. So migrant will take will make up 75% of the Australian population growth, says the intergeneration report. So the previous news from ABC basically talks about the uh, the growth of population from fertility rate is dropping and the issue of aging citizens. And uh, how we can tackle. So the report basically says that they uh, need more migrants. And that's obviously a big topic for my channels and a lot of migrants, what they expected. So again, the, uh, the, the, uh, the brief up here is about the same. So I'm going to repeat that. Uh, so obviously the prediction of a dropping growth of population, that's concerning because that means the budget spent might not meet the requirements. So because migrants are on average younger and ex existed uh, for better as a taxpayer, another word to say, uh, modeling for the report average skilled migrants contribute more uh, the federal budget in taxes. So again, and that's why you see that um, there's a shift of uh, more talented and skilled migrants to actually be in Australia because they, they tend to uh, contribute more uh, where with their intellectual properties and um, whatever they uh, contribute to it. So you can see, if we, if we reflect back to um, the skilled migrant, there's a, there, there's a high education part and there's also a trades diploma, uh, diploma type of uh, tradesmen. Uh, you can see that they tend to uh, light better for migrant who has high, you know achieved high education perhaps masters or perhaps phd they want these kind of people and as you can see they want global talent people um so that's again uh, the issue that the uh, the government is tackling so migration should be kept uh 
at or below capacity of destination city or region to assault new migrant taken into account. So again, they are talking about the control of migrant going to major cities uh, and also uh, sustainably, sustainable migration provides a great certainty of government and business individual for the future. So again, that's that's that what we're going to see here uh, is all the, the requirement and the growth expected for migration quarter. But of course, uh, we have experienced in these two years of downturns. Uh, I think the growth will be adjusted from 2022, obviously, because at the moment there's international travel rest restrictions. Although if they want to set the target high, they're not likely to meet it. So um, again, prior to pandemic, the um, the growth quarter was uh, shifted from 190,000 down to 160. Uh, now they are expected IGR forecast that matches uh, to the budget uh, report that we have um, done in our video before uh, for the upcoming growth to recover to about 235,000 per year by 2024 and 25. That means that that's going to be a lot. And that means that there's a lot of room uh, for migrant to actually move around and it's a good news for migration to Australia. So what if your thought? Why don't you leave a comment right down below and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so once we hit 1st of July we'll have a lot of upcoming news of all the new policies of different states and territory obviously the Australian immigration policy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video. Goodbye.